St. Leonard's Community Services would like to acknowledge that the land on which we gather for this event is situated upon treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit and traditional territories of the Erie, Neutral, Huron, Wyandot, the Haudenosaunee, and some of the Ojibwe Nation. The territory is mutually covered by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement between the Iroquois Confederacy, the Ojibwe, and other allied nations to peaceably share and care for the land and resources around the Great Lakes. Today, these remain the home to many Indigenous people, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work in this community that includes the Six Nations of the Grand River and Mississaugas of the Credit First Nations territories. We also acknowledge that the settler population has been able to benefit from this beautiful land. I'd like to welcome everyone to the agency's 53rd Annual General Meeting and second virtual meeting. I'd like to thank our many funders and community partners staff, clients, for attending our virtual AGM. The business meeting of the annual general meeting took place on September the 9th. The following are our board members for 21-22. Myself, Merv Hughes, William Keithley, Eileen McKenzie, Kirk McKenzie, Rita Malay, Peter Martin, Claire Morris, Michael Skiberis, David Toshida, Nicole Tosinski, and Lynn Mordell. I'd like now to call on Brad Stark to give an overview of the annual report. Hello everyone, and welcome to the 53rd Annual General Meeting of St. Leonard's Community Services. Unfortunately, we are still coming to you from this virtual box, instead of being together to celebrate our agency's achievements, the successes of our clients, the contributions of our amazing community partners, and the hard work and tireless efforts of our staff. However, the good news is, all of those great things still exist, and over the next hour or so, we will recognize all of that. But before we begin, we need to recognize that today is September 30th, the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. A day to remember all those that survived residential schools, to remember all those who didn't, and to pay our respect for the families and communities. This day is a time to reflect on a dark chapter in Canada's history. And it is by shedding light on those darkest passages that we learn from the past and move forwards toward a brighter future. Today and every day, we stand in solidarity with our First Nations brothers and sisters because truth matters, reconciliation matters, and of course, every child matters. Now, before I summarize the annual report, here are some messages from local dignitaries. Good evening, everyone. This is Will Bauma, MPP for Brantford Brant and Parliamentary Assistant to the Ministry of Finance. It gives me great pleasure to bring greetings on this evening of your AGM. You know, St. Leonard's has been an incredible partner with the province of Ontario, taking care of the most vulnerable. Man, I gather that this has been going on for over 53 years. I can't say how pleased I am with the relationship that we've been able to build with Brad Stark and everyone there working with the province and here locally on the ground with St. Leonard's in order to make great opportunities happen for our most vulnerable. Keep up the great work and have a great AGM. Take care. Hi folks, Mayor Kevin Davis. It's my great pleasure to bring virtual greetings to the 2021 annual general meeting of the St. Leonard's Community Services Organization. And this is one annual meeting that I really love going to because one, we celebrate what it is that St. Leonard's does in our community. I gotta tell you, our community, I can't imagine what our community would be like without St. Leonard's because as you know, you do, you do so much from all the justice programs, housing, employment, of course, uh, help for those who have addictions and substance abuse issues. It's, it's truly mind-boggling what you all do. I'm so proud of St. Leonard's and I'm so grateful for St. Leonard's. But there's something else I love about your annual meeting. And that's, you know, some annual meetings, you know, they got the financial statement and they talk about their objectives. But I love your meeting because you talk about success, not in terms of just the organization, but the people the all-star employees, uh, the clients have had great success and, their, and all their stories. It really brings home your annual meeting, just what it is you do. We'd be a much poorer place without everything you do. So congratulations. I hope you had a great year and I hope next year will be even better for you. Thanks. Good day, my name is David Bailey and as the mayor of the County of Brant, it is my privilege to bring greetings on behalf of the county. And thank you for inviting me to your annual general meeting. The County of Brant and surrounding areas are very fortunate to have St. Leonard's 
Community service is available to the public to provide programming and service that enable our community members to overcome a wide range of challenges such as employment, housing, justice, as well as addictions and mental health. I would like to congratulate St. Leonard's Community Services on all your successes in the past years. I know it's been challenging. I want to thank you for continuously working to affect change and provide a positive environment for the youth in our communities. Please, everyone stay well and stay safe. I would now like to summarize our annual report, which is available on our website or in hard copy at our head office. You will see that our theme this year is resiliency, which in the midst of a pandemic has been on full display. We are amazed by the resiliency that our clients have displayed, which will be demonstrated during the presentation of our Challenge Choices Change Awards later on. Our staff have displayed resiliency in working with our clients, adapting to new ways of delivering service, meeting the challenge of increased demand for services, and coping with the impacts that the pandemic has had on their personal lives. Our agency itself has displayed great resiliency in adapting service provision quickly to continue to provide face-to-face -face client service safely in office-based and residential settings, as well as pivoting to virtual services to ensure anyone who wanted services could receive them. And lastly, the resiliency of our community and community partners to work collaboratively on new initiatives that addressed immediate pandemic needs as well as programming that addresses Brantford, Brant, and Haldeman challenges that existed before the pandemic and continue to exist. Included in the report, you will find information about newly launched programs this year, including the Skills Advance Ontario Construct Your Career Program in partnership with Conestoga College and the Brant Skills Centre that provides pre-employment training in the construction trades and a job placement in the booming construction industry, or the Work Readiness and Advancement Program for youth up to age 29 that provides employment training, job placement, and wraparound supports like housing assistance, disability supports, or childcare supports. We have also added 30 youth supportive housing units that provide case management and rent assistance for youth up to age 29. In partnership with CMHA, we offer addiction support to residents of their safe bed program that supports individuals involved in the criminal justice system, and we were thrilled to be a part of the relaunch of the Brantford Downtown Outreach Team in partnership with Grand River Community Health Center and Laurier University, connecting our most vulnerable population to much needed supports and services. Demand for our services was not reduced during the pandemic and in fact increased in many areas. The annual report highlights some of these statistics, including helping almost 4,700 individuals with over 27,000 interactions in our addictions and mental health programs, seeing over 700 people in our adult and youth justice programs with more than 2,600 hours of community service nearly 2,000 contacts within supportive housing, and providing over 2,000 people with career advice and coaching, leading to over 600 job seekers finding employment. The annual report also highlights activity in each of our four service sectors, addictions and mental health, housing, justice, and employment. These reports summarize just some of the ways we have adapted to meet increased or changing demands for our services brought on by the pandemic and other factors. They also contain highly valuable, and appreciated feedback from the most important source we have, that being individuals and families that seek and utilize our support. From a financial perspective, the pandemic provided many challenges for organizations and businesses alike. But thanks to support from a number of funders for PPE, additional staffing, enhanced cleaning and safety measures, the agency was able to maintain a strong financial position. Now that you've heard what we've been doing and what we have in store, it's time to recognize the community partners and staff that contributed to this success and to recognize the clients who, through the use of our services, have made significant changes in their lives and, for us, make all the hard work so rewarding and worthwhile. First up is the Community Partnership Award. This award is selected by the agency and recognizes organizations that help St. Leonard's in meeting its vision, which is striving to meet our community's needs. In order to do that, we rely on the contributions and collaboration from others. Previous winners of this award include the Brent County OPP, Home Depot, Moore's Clothing for Men, Workforce Planning Board, Brantford Police Service, and last year, two community groups that made and distributed cloth masks for use by clients, the caremongering Brantford Mask Makers and Brant County Face Masks. This year, we would like to recognize a community partner for their significant contributions to our most marginalized and at-risk clients in a significant time of crisis. We are extremely grateful for their continued partnership within our Brantford Downtown Outreach Team, as well as their mobile medical supports to both our addiction and mental health programs and Youth Resource Center. This partnership has been instrumental in providing timely and flexible care to our clients, as well as maintaining joint partnerships and advocacy within the community for homelessness and at-risk individuals. I would like to thank and congratulate the Grand River Community Health Center 
as our winner of the Community Partnership Award for 2021. Hello, uh, St. Leonard's uh, colleagues. Uh, it's uh, Peter from the Grand River Community Health Center, and thank you for the opportunity uh, for uh, offering a few comments uh, at your AGM. Um, we've got to say, uh, when Katie sent us an email that we were recipient of your Community Partnership Award, we got to say how uh, thrilled we were uh, with that message. Folks here think, first of all, that it's just a wonderful initiative that you launch such an award, uh, and I think it's great to prompt uh, collaboration and uh, partnership the way you do. Um, and uh, we feel privileged to work with you, uh, and we work with you on the Ontario Health Team, on the Downtown Outreach Team, uh, the Addiction Medicine Clinic, uh, the Fairview Clinic with our nurse practitioner. Uh, we work together uh, on uh, supervised consumption and safe supply issues. On all those issues, uh, we think we can do better in collaboration and in partnership than we can do alone. So again, thank you for that. And a personal thank you, and I know I'm gonna leave some folks out and, and please excuse that, but uh, working with Brad, with Kim, with Katie, Alana, Colleen, uh, Julie, Harvey, Dana, uh, uh, all the stories I hear in my uh, personal experience, it's a pleasure and a privilege. Uh, for all of that, thank you, and we're very proud uh, to be your recipient of the award this year. Thank you. Now for the highlight of every AGM, the Challenge Choices Change Awards, which recognize the extraordinary achievements of individuals who have trusted St. Leonard's in their journey. Challenge Choices Change are three words that represent the essence of our mission. They describe the journey of every person who comes into our care, and the duty our staff assumes to navigate that journey. The award is presented annually to people who have participated in our services and overcome significant challenges by making difficult choices that result in positive changes in their lives. Tonight we have four awards to be presented by the staff who nominated these very deserving role models. First I would like to introduce Clarissa to present a Challenge Choices Change Award to Cody. Hi, I'm Clarissa and I'm a Concurrent Disorders Clinician with St. Leonard's Community Services. I'm here today to present the Challenge Choice Change Award to my client, Cody. Cody's come to services to work on improving his mental health and well-being and make positive changes in his substance use. Cody has experienced many challenges within his life that has caused much stress and adversity. Cody's connected to the Concurrent Disorders Department and was previously connected to the Ontario Works Addiction Services Initiative Program. Cody's worked very hard for years and is always engaged within counseling appointments. Cody's made positive changes in his substance use and has put much effort into improving his mental health and well-being. Cody's dedicated to learning new skills, challenging himself to meet his goals, and both thinking and acting in ways that support the life he wants to live. Cody's experienced many challenges and adversity within his life, some of which he still experiences daily. Despite being faced with challenges on a day-to-day -day basis, Cody's managed to be incredibly resilient and adaptable and maintain his substance use successes. Cody continues to learn new skills on how to cope with challenges and has maintained abstinence from problematic substances for years. Cody's had many successes in his substance use and has been learning to have more control of his thoughts, which in turn affect his emotions and behaviors. He continues to put effort into maintaining his substance use successes and work on continuing to improve his mental health and well-being. Cody continues to work towards personal goals he has for himself. Cody is very adaptable and has strengths in the areas of empathy, compassion, sense of humor, resiliency, motivation for continuing to create positive change in his life, positivity, intelligence, self-awareness, and friendliness. I've noticed many successes and positive changes in Cody's well-being since I've worked with him over the past couple of years. And he's also had other service providers that are connected to him that have also noticed these many positive changes he's made for himself that reflect in his well-being and the way he continues to challenge himself and grow. Cody does not give up even when much weight is piled on his shoulders and he utilizes his strengths every day to maintain his successes and continue moving forward. Thank you so much and great job, Cody. <laughs> Hi, my name is Cody Bennett. Um, I've been with St. Leonard's for um, almost five years now. Um, I've been clean for exactly the same amount of time. I'll be five years now in October. Thank you for the award. Um, I, it is an honor because it does, not only does it show me that I've done something, but it also shows everyone else what they've done. And uh, that's definitely a lot because I think about where I was five years ago compared to now and uh, it's, a, it's an incredible 
Um, it's an incredible experience, but it's also very, um, it can be a very emotional path. But it, it definitely, definitely is worth the fight because I can tell you that my thought process or the way, my, the way I thought back then compared to now is just completely different and more positive. Um, St. Leonard's has helped in obviously more ways than one. When I think about what St. Leonard's has done for me in the past five years, um, I got to say one of the biggest ones is the way I think. And that has not only helped my uh, recovery, but it has also helped me in general life because um, I feel like a lot of your addiction it has to do with your thoughts and the way you think and just, I guess, your over, overall energy and the way you think of your life. Um, is I've definitely learned to think more positively. Um, I, I feel like I have a purpose. I feel like um, before the purpose was to get clean. Now I have more than just getting clean, I have a purpose of life. And uh, that, that's pretty amazing. Oh, I do want to thank everyone in the community at St. Leonard's and um, all Brantford that does help out and everything like that. Uh, I much appreciate the award um, and uh, yeah. Next, I would like to introduce Leanna to present a Challenge Choices Change Award to Michael. Hi everyone, my name is Leanna Rago and I work for the Supportive Housing Program and I am here today to present two Challenge Choices and Change Awards. The first award I will be presenting will be going to Michael. Michael has been part of the Supportive Housing Program since December of 2020 after being referred from the RAP Program through the Brant Employment Centre. While participating in the Supportive Housing Program, Michael completed the RAP program and has since obtained full-time hours working at the Habitat for Humanity Restore. Yay, Michael! <laughs> Michael maintains good communication with Supportive Housing staff and remains connected to all the community supports to sustain stable mental health. Michael is an independent, polite individual who is very soft-spoken, open-minded, and motivated to continue bettering herself and her future. Michael, you rock! <laughs> Michael is a great addition on the Supportive Housing Program, and all staff are excited to support her in accomplishing her goals. Thank you, Michael. You're awesome. I want to thank Leanna and everyone from the Supportive Housing Team for all the help that they provided me. Um, I couldn't have made it as far as I did in life without all of the help that I've been given from everybody. So I just want to let everybody know that I appreciate everything that everyone's done for me. Next up, we have Leanna again to present a Challenge Choices Change Award to Sharla, who could not be here today. For my second award, I will be presenting to an individual who has done tremendously well for herself. This individual has been actively working towards bettering her mental health and stabilizing her addictions by attending all appointments with myself for concurrent disorders clinician through addictions and mental health and the early intervention program through the Brantford General Hospital. The client I am proudly presenting this award to is Sharla. Carla is currently enrolled in the Brant Employment Center RAP program and is currently working through a temp agency. Charlotte is very independent, self-efficient, and respectful, and she maintains such a good rapport with St. Leonard's Community Services staff and her landlord. No matter what is thrown Charlotte's way, she can effectively get back on her feet and accomplish her goals. We are very, very proud and lucky to have Sharla part of our Youth Supportive Housing Program. Thank you, Sharla. You rock. And finally, Jonaki to present a Challenge Choices Change Award to Preektra. Hello everyone, my name is Jonaki, preferred name is Joe, and I'm an employment consultant at Brand Employment Center. Today, I'm here to present the Challenge Choice and Change Award on behalf of employment to my very dear client, Priyaktra Chow. 
Priyakta Chow came into the service when he was going through a very challenging phase. He was in the middle of a court battle to prove his innocence for a crime that he did not commit. He was wrongfully accused. For a good amount of two years, he was on trial for a murder case which took place in Brantford. During this period, Priyakta was incarcerated and then was mandated to have an ankle monitor when he was released for trial. He had several barriers to finding employment because of the charges. Therefore, he wanted a fresh start and a new beginning. In Priyakta's words, he was seeking for a ray of hope and sunshine. In several appointments, he expressed his battle with mental health problems as he found it difficult to navigate through all the tragic events that took place in his life. He stated, I never even had a speeding ticket in my life and all of a sudden I was being imprisoned and charged with murder. Priyakta connected with the service to retrain and go back to school in a new field to second career. He applied for the heavy equipment training program. Although his charges were dropped and he was proven innocent by the code, this entire journey had taken a financial toll on Priyakta and his family. They sold their house to crop out the lawyer's fees. He also came up with a payment plan with the college in case the ministry does not approve for full tuition fees. And he connected with COS to access mental health supports to work on the trauma-laden experience that he had for the past two years. At present, Priyaktra is enrolled in heavy equipment program offered through Transport Training Center. His second career application was approved by the ministry. Although the entire fees were not covered by the second career, but he was contented as he already had a monthly payment plan arranged with the college. Throughout the second career application process, there was never a time when Priyakta lost contact with me or he was missing in action. Throughout his court battle, he would email me confirming that he will get back to me whenever he has all his life stabilization sorted. He worked on his mental health and reached out for support. Despite all the challenges and struggles, he would ensure to start his email with, Good morning, Joe. I hope you're well. He would always make sure to thank me and let me know how grateful he is for all the assistance and support. When his second career was approved, in his testimony, he said, I see a new beginning, a new hope, and a fresh start with my career. Thank you to St. Leonard's Brain Employment Center for all the support and assistance. I'm extremely grateful. All in all, Priyaktra is a delightful human being who greets everyone with a warm smile and kind gesture. Migrated from Cambodia when he was just six years old as a refugee, he talks about his memories of landing in this beautiful country with a heart full of dreams and eyes filled with hope of a better tomorrow. When he was wrongfully accused, his dreams were shattered, but he never gave up. He found two new best friends, resilience and perseverance, who stood through thick and thin with him and helped him sail, sail through the most difficult phase of his life. Last but not the least, I would like to bring upon the concept of a real hero. Who is a hero? For me, a hero is not someone dressed in a superhuman costume and has all the magical powers, but a hero is someone who embodies all the goodness in them despite the harsh stumbling blocks in their life. Priyaktra is a bona fide champion because he still has that pure and serene aura in him despite all the tragedy that he was subjected to. He chose optimism over pessimism. He chose hope over hopelessness. This is what makes him a true hero. On behalf of the entire employment team, I would like to congratulate Priyaktra on winning this award and we wish him all the very best for all his future endeavors. We want you to know that we are all very proud of you. Thank you. I would like to thank Junaki and the team at St. Leonard's. I was going through a rough time in my life. I felt hopeless at times. One day, I came across an ad that says they were looking for second career candidates. Later that evening, I went home and did some research. I found out that I could have possibly fit in this program and I would be grateful if, if they approved me for a second career. I told myself, tough times never last. It's just moments that you have to go through. I found light the minute I called St. Leonard's. Everyone was so polite and answered all my questions with open arms. I'm so grateful I got in touch with Jonaki. 
She helped me out through the worst times in my life. From phone calls to emails, she never gave up on me, and I can never thank her enough. I'm so grateful for everything you've, you guys have done for me. I'm now halfway done my school and looking forward to starting my new second career as a heavy uh, machinery operator. Again, thank you Janaki and the team of St. Leonard's. I would never have gone this far without you guys. Congratulations again to these very deserving Challenge Choices Change Award winners. The next award to hand out tonight is the Alveo Award, which is named in honor of a former employee of the agency who served many years as the maintenance manager, Alveo Di Domenico. This award is presented to the residential program that has the best upkeep, cleanliness, tidiness, and beauty. The agency has five residential programs, which include the Youth Resource Center, Peter Willis Residence, Sally Lee Law House, Renwick House, and the Withdrawal Management and Treatment Service, who is the reigning champion. The winner is chosen by our Board of Directors and typically is done by attending each residence and judging the facility in the following criteria, exterior and curb appeal, interior, and a welcoming feeling from the staff. In this age of COVID, staff presented virtual tours and presentations to the board to make their selection. After deliberation and a close vote from our board members, the winner of this year's Alveo Award is the Youth Resource Center. Before we move on to the staff awards for this year, we would like to recognize 21 staff who celebrated a milestone with us this year that ranges from five years all the way to 30 years with the agency. Congratulations to these staff. Our first staff award is the Health and Wellness Ambassador Award, which is designed to recognize a staff member who has shown a commitment to living a healthy lifestyle, being a healthy and positive role model, and promoting healthy workplace initiatives, including the promotion of self-care and mindfulness for all staff. Nominees for 2021 are Jenna Barr, Clarissa James, Steve Corrales, and Rebecca Whitecross. 
I'm going to share some comments made about the winner of this award. Attempts in every way she can to remind the team how important working in a ha happy, healthy place is. I have never had a staff person be so committed to the health and wellness team and its goals and activities. During the pandemic, she created a health and wellness teams group for staff and shared positive and uplifting messages to improve morale and mental health, recipes that are both healthy and delicious, and many other articles and videos aiding colleagues in pursuing a healthy lifestyle. The winner of the Health and Wellness Ambassador Award for 2021 is Jenna Barr. I would like to start by congratulating all of those nominated. I would like to thank those that nominated me and the board members for selecting me. I am very honoured and appreciative. I feel so fortunate to work for an agency that not only believes in the benefits of health and wellness, but supports this. To have an award based on this, a cross-functional team, health and wellness boards, numerous activities, etc. Thank you St. Leonard's for taking this perspective. I truly love all things health and wellness and I'm passionate about incorporating it into my life, my family's and my work environment. Whether it be morning workouts, my large water bottle, lunchtime walks, shakes, motivational quotes, meditation, new recipes, hobbies, etc. I love it all. I want to give a special thanks to my manager, Sarah, for allowing me to bring ideas and activities forward to the team. And a big thanks for my coworkers in Haldman who participate in all of our weekly health and wellness activities. The work environment I am lucky enough to have helps me with my overall wellness. Thank you. Our next awards are the James Roxburgh Employee of the Year Awards, named after Jim Roxburgh, who was our former employment director. Employees are nominated by their peers in part-time, full-time, and leader categories, and selected by the board directors based on the nominations, which are based on an employee's contributions to clients, support of coworkers, relations with the community, promotion of the agency's mission and vision, and service beyond the call of duty. Here are some, com some of the comments that were made about the nominees across all categories, pulled directly from the nomination. Talks very highly of the agency. Always positive and friendly, is open to new ideas and is always willing to listen to suggestions and welcomes feedback. Is a glowing example of everything this agency stands for. Strives to exceed expectations every day. Promotes St. Leonard's and the programs we offer to everyone. Treats everyone with respect. Additionally, you will hear comments specifically about the winner of each category as it is presented. All of which are comments that demonstrate the attributes, dedication, and work ethic of all nominees. I am pleased to announce this year's nominees for our James Roxburgh Employee of the Year Awards as chosen by their peers in the part-time category. Jane Doughty and Barb Ireland. The following comments were made about the winner. She is a cheerleader, a friend, an awesome and dedicated coworker is caring and open with staff and clients. Encourages clients to see the options open to them and reminds them that they have what it takes to move forward. She is full of compassion and empathy, one of the strongest people I know, and a rock for those who need someone to lean on. Is always cooperative and respectful with her peers and champions a team approach by valuing everyone's individual contributions. Is approachable and open and a great listener. Congratulations to the winner of the Part-Time Employee of the Year Award for 2021, Jane Doughty. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jane Doughty. I am a part-time support counsellor at the Youth Resource Centre. I would like to say thank you to whomever nominated me and the board for voting for me. It only took 17 years to get this award. All joking aside, I do appreciate the recognition and everyone's vote of confidence. A little history of my life at St. Leonard's Community Services. I first volunteered at the Chatham Street program back in the late 1990s. Not sure of the exact year. I think it was 1997. The volunteer experience prepared me for my employment in the residential sector. My first day of placement was at what is now the YRC. Back then it was the Dalhousie Street, Chatham Street programme. The office door was split in two. At that time the top half opened and this is where the kids received their medication. One of the young boys literally jumped over the door to get at staff. It reminded me of the behaviour from the kids at Chatham Street. 
If I never had the volunteer experience, I'm not sure that I would have been able to complete my placement. I think I would have felt intimidated when the boy jumped over the door. Many years later, when I moved over to what is the YRC, the YRC now, who was the first boy I saw? The one who jumped over the door. The, ma the young man attended post-secondary education and the last I heard he had obtained his degree. There are always special moments that never leave our hearts. I have two. One, it was at William Street and it was Thanksgiving weekend. I cooked a meal for the kids. There was only one boy home at the time. The rest of the kids were out on a visit. I had the table set nicely with the tablecloth, the flowers and a vase and all the food and individual dishes. The young man loved the homemade stuffing. He ate so much of it, he couldn't eat anything else. When I sat down to eat, he sat a few minutes, then left the table. He came back and sat down. I asked if he was okay. He said, I can't do it, Jane. You did all this for me. I can't leave you to eat alone. Another case was a young boy asked me to sew his jogging pants. They were ripped at the seam. It was very easy to sew. When I gave them back to him, he was jumping with joy, saying, Jane, you can't see where you sewed them. How did you do it? I told him it was a straight seam and I could show him how to sew it in case he needed to sew, sew them one day. These are the special moments that may not seem like much to some, to some people, but to the youth that we serve, a little kindness means so much more to them. In closing, I would like to say that this recognition would not have been possible if it wasn't the great team of staff that I work with at the YRC. We truly are a team. Thank you, everyone. I will now announce the nominees for the Full-Time Employee of the Year Award. Jennifer Atwell, Andrew Bach, Sharon Brooker, Lindsay Bright, Sam Bryson, Colleen Double, Whitney Easton, jean viev Forget, Clarissa James, Laura Jones, Zachary Portelli, Elizabeth Vano, Alana Willemsma, and Raven Wilkins. The following comments were made about the winner. Always remains professional and calm even during high crises encountered with clients. Treats every single client equally by offering each of them her best. Is continuously promoting the agency by constantly referring clients to the services we offer within the agency. Works diligently with each client to help them achieve their goals. Works very hard to help her colleagues do their jobs efficiently and effectively and to help create a positive environment for the residents. Works professionally in collaboration with various partners and community members and is committed and dedicated to providing excellence in client service. Congratulations to the full-time Employee of the Year Award winner for 2021, Whitney Easton. I'd like to start by saying thank you to Brittany Harrison for nominating and acknowledging me for full-time Employee of the Year. Including my student year, I have been with St. Leonard's Community Services for 15 years now. This is my first win, and I appreciate that the Board of Directors and Brad decided to pick me this year. Thank you. I will now announce the nominees for the Leader Award. Lindy Bancroft, Isabel Camano, Sarah Fleming, Alan McSpadden, Becky Norman, Marg Richardson, Rebecca Ripko, and Julie Smith. Some comments made about the winner. Believes in the work of the agency, and is always looking for ways to make things better, more efficient, and safer for the staff and clients. Has a positive outlook and will steer away from negative thoughts and discussions. Welcomes the opinion of others and can always back up her ideas with research. Is always calm and maintains her composure even when things get heated or there is debate. Is able to handle herself very professionally and adjust her style to her audience. Is a great communicator and listener. Is quiet, friendly, welcoming, fair, hardworking, and has integrity. Congratulations to the winner of the Leader Award for 2021, Becky Norman. 
First, I would like to thank the board for not only recognizing my efforts over the past challenging year, but for also understanding what the agency wants and needs and making sure those things happen. Second, I want to give a shout out to the admin team who have been unfailingly supportive this past year. From ensuring staff could work virtually with a few days notice when we went into lockdown the first time, to helping me source and inventory gowns and gloves and masks and hand sanitizer and the list goes on, to ordering and installing plexiglass barriers and testing air quality when we got word we could start bringing people back to the offices. Third, I want to acknowledge an incredibly collaborative senior management team who took my constant policy revisions in stride, provided information about how it would affect their sectors, and still made it work for the agency as a whole. And a special thanks to our executive director, Brad Stark, as a part of that team, who trusted us to do our jobs, listened to our advice and concerns, and ultimately made some tough decisions for the betterment of our clients and the agency. And last but not least, I want to recognize our incredible staff, supervisors, managers, and those providing direct client care every day. I often joke that being an HR professional in a social services environment is a dream because you understand self-reflection and utilize amazing conflict resolution skills daily. But more than that, you have a passion for this work that is always your priority. So when I add more to the pandemic policy or schedule you for a training where you have to be masked the whole day, or ask you to scan and email your paperwork to me instead of putting it in my mail tray. You do it without hesitation because you understand that ultimately it's all to make life safer and easier for our clients. So thank you. Congratulations again to all of our well-deserved award winners tonight, especially our client award winners. Your courageous stories of perseverance and strength is what drives us as an organization to be better every day. I would also again like to thank the staff of St. Leonard's Community Services. I am thankful for our staff in many ways, for your continued focus on client service, for your ability to adapt and think outside the box, for your efforts to provide a safe environment for our clients and peers, for your ability to balance work and personal challenges throughout this pandemic, and for your patience in sitting through my numerous video updates. A virtual AGM is no easy task. It takes a high level of technical know-how, creative genius, and organizational prowess for this. And I would like to thank Sam Bryson, Grant Emsley and Alan McSpadden for their efforts toward putting together a professional product despite not working with professional actors. I would also, on behalf of the agency, like to thank our board of directors for their support during the past year and throughout the pandemic. They have made this challenge easier by acknowledging and recognizing the challenges our staff and clients have experienced and also developing policies to ensure the safety of all. And before I go and hand the podium back to Merv, I would like to thank everyone for tuning into our AGM tonight and being a supporter of our agency. Hopefully soon we can get back to some fundraising activities and community events to spread awareness of our services and the benefits they provide to the communities that we serve. Thank you everyone, and please remember, stay positive, but test negative. On behalf of the Board of Directors, I wanted to take a particular thank you to all the staff of St. Leonard's Community Services for their dedicated service throughout the pandemic. It's been an incredible year not only for clients, and staff, and board members, but the whole community. And I wanted to give special thanks to the staff for their dedication and perseverance as we go through this pandemic. Thank you. Do we get to like watch like a blooper video after? And then, so he said, hi, Jane, blah, blah, blah. Look, I've grown because I'm so short, right? And so was he, but yeah. he did grow a couple of inches. And then he had a rough time there, but then I saw him one day in Home Hardware, mm -hmm. and he said, Jane, I'm doing good. I work now, and I said, good for you. I said, see, you did listen when you were angry at us. <laughs> do you want to say action? Yes, I do really badly, I'm just chill. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Action. Your client oh, got sorry. nominated and won. That's really cool. That's I your know. work. I'm so excited. Good. Squeezy, okay? Yeah, yeah shake it out. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. Never be an actor because they would say, cue action. You'd be like, That's a tight ship around here, eh?
it's not working like it used to. Okay. Being service provi provision. I will. Okay, I got this. Okay, hold on a second. I should, can you talk like real loud like you were doing? Hi, everyone. Okay, I need to turn the volume down. Yeah. Just a tiny bit. You project very well. Oh, it's getting really loud. These kids to have a gift of something. Yeah. You see their music or art. You should see their artwork. Yeah. Oh my God. So